Hello and happy Sunday. So, last Sunday we looked at this um, 1986 Sears Christmas wish book and um, saw a lot of interesting stuff from the mid 80s. So, I thought today, this Sunday, to try to keep in the spirit of Christmas and try to forget about all the things happening in the world right now, uh, which kind of seemed mostly stupid if you get if you get right down to it i mean we have a lot of weird things happening lately uh, i thought it'd be nice to look at this um 1980 jc penny christmas and see how different it was and i can assure you having lived through 1980 um it was different than um that little piece of styrofoam there it was different very much so than 1986. It was uh, more like the 70s, which I think is true of the first year of a lot of decades. They're basically a continuation of uh, the last decade. So when if you were alive in 1980, it was very much just like the 70s. And I don't really feel like the 80s kicked in until about 83 and really by 85. So... Um, Let's look it over. This is J.C. Penny, Christmas 1980. Um, it says, Save this catalog. Toys on pages 375 to 527, available to August 15th, 1981. And if, I, if you recall, um, I believe it said something to that effect. Um, the 85 one. Or the 86 one. Um, no, no, I can't find it. It had a... Uh, where was it? Or was it... Uh, oh, yeah. Right there. Almost the exact same message. Interesting. Um, so... That might have been something. I mean, I was a little kid when these came out, so that might have just been routine for these catalogs. On the cover, we have a very uh, nice picture of Santa making toys in his workshop. And he's sitting on a wooden chair. He's got paint, and and uh, he's painting a doll. And uh, on the back, just very much like the back of... The 86 one, we have some technology for sale, but it's 1980 technology. A turntable, speakers, and um, a stereo system with a radio. A, looks like a graphic equalizer and a cassette uh, uh, tape deck and headphones. So, um, And this setup was $399.70. Uh, five piece 25 watt modular component system so um so let's uh, take a trip into 1980 and i'll be your guide as someone who lived there in it and um hopefully you'll find this video interesting and enjoy some of my anecdotes and memories of living in the 80s so um i was i lived in the greatest way you could live in the 80s i was a kid from uh, 1980, I started my second year of school, and I ended the 80s as a teenager. So um, I got to experience a lot of the, the happy parts of the 80s. And uh, what we're looking at here are Christmas ornaments. And the, the Christmas ornaments that were in style at the time, many of which found their way onto my family Christmas tree. And like a lot of families, uh, my Christmas tree was really just a, a collection, an archive of ornaments from going all the way back to the 60s when my parents got married. And, you know, and every year we would add something new to it. So we got a holiday punch bow with glasses and lots of ho holiday themed crystal and serving wear. Now, these uh, kerosene lanterns were really big and popular. Um, we had a lot of them and I don't know what the, the deal behind that trend was, 
but we had them in the house. Uh, if you, we did burn them occasionally. They made an interesting smell, and if you got too close, they'd make a black uh, smoke mark on whatever was above them. Um, and we got some clocks, some peace birds, peace doves. Um, W.C. Fields was uh, very popular in the 80s because a lot of the people who were still working, you know, approaching retirement age, grew up on W.C. Fields. So it was that whole nostalgia. Over, we get some decor. Very consistent. One thing I will say about the 70s is there was lots of browns, lots of earth tones. Um, some prints, some outdoor prints, some Audubon looking prints. Uh, some of these restaurant games, as I like to call them, you know, like you'd be waiting on your table. It wasn't just Cracker Barrel in the 80s. A lot of restaurants had things like this. Uh, Cracker Barrel is one of the few ones that still does, but... Um, um, a lot of times when you waited, there would be some kind of woodcut game like this to play at your restaurant. Doll houses and with including really nicely done dolls and uh, really nicely done accessories. And I think this would be a guilty pleasure for a lot of fathers who like to build things and appreciate miniatures and so forth. To present something to their daughters, but they probably had a little fun with it themselves, at least putting it together. Matching pajamas and uh, notice the bonnet. Um, you saw that bonnet a lot because in 1976 there was the bicentennial, and believe it or not, the the 1700s bonnet became chic again for ladies, and it lasted for a few years. So that's why we get that bonnet look. Um, now we get to some ladies fashions for winter. Um, this very similar to what we saw in the nineties, but, um, the mixture of green, gold, and, uh, red for holiday colors. And of course in the nineties, that was like year round. Um, and we get some terry cloth of flannel kind of warm, cozy stuff. Some more of the um, uh, less ho less cozy, more uh, exciting clothing here. Um, back to cozy. This looks like they're graduating Hogwarts or something. This was the tracksuit, uh, popular look in the late seventies, early eighties. Lee Majors and Farrah Fawcett were constantly seen wearing tracksuits like this. Uh, let's see, more sleepwear for ladies. And we get to a little bit more cozy, not so cozy, cozy, cozy and uh, slippers. It's winter. It's cold. Like uh, basically a a sleeping bag you could put on. We were also in the middle of a uh, energy crisis throughout pretty much the entire decade of the seventies, starting in seventy four. There was an energy crisis that just never let up in this country. So people really went for the cozy. At this point, so um. I mean, it's kind of funny when you think about it because um, that was directly related to conserving energy. <laughs> so um, now we get to some proper 80s fashions here. When... Um, we getting into the the era of the pleats, the pleated pants. Boy, in the night by the nineties, it would get to the point of absurdity. I am drinking some tea right now, so um, still got a bit of a winter thing going on myself here. Me and Mary both still struggling to uh, 
get through this season. Move it up a little bit so you can see better. And we're cutting through a lot of now, uh, like this, these pants and that shirt. My mom had that exact outfit. Um, let's see. And she worked at J.C. Penney at, at one point um, when I was a little, very, very young. This was a uh, real popular look in the seventies and eighties. It's like a tunic. Um, someone was doing some math here, trying to figure out if they could afford something on this page, I guess. Whatever they want to cost $17. The little uh, Basset Hound. And um, Basset Hounds were actually big in the 70s. They were a popular dog to have. Everything from Colombo to the styles. Uh, um, it, it's, it's, you know, you go through decades where you have different dogs that are popular, like Chihuahuas might be popular in the 90s or, or whatever, but Bassets were popular in the late 70s and early 80s. She's sporting the Mary Lou Retton look here. Popular gymnast, Bonnie Franklin style. Everyone wanted to look like Brooke Shields still. The dark hair and dark eyebrows. So you would see types. School marm, as we called him. The school marm dress is what we called that back then. Um, but all things considered, you know, it, it's, I mean, now that looks kind of dated. Some of these things could actually work today. Like, I feel like a woman could wear that today and be very much in style. That... That slick look right there, though, I mean, that's kind of timeless with the turtleneck and the, the shiny leather jacket with a popped collar. That just looks very, very cool. Um, that almost looks like a uniform, like a, like a stewardess or something. Then we get to some winter coats. Cozy boots. Gloves. Pocketbooks, purses. Um, and this is the whole Hummel and Kaiser porcelain thing took the country by storm. So you had lots of imitations, the little children fig figurines, manicure sets, makeup. Uh, this is Jovan, and uh, I this ginseng for men, sex appeal for men, grass oil for men. And my, this this thing was around for ages because I saw that a lot when I was a kid. That exact same set. English leather. Uh, these are gift boxes for men. You know, you I would get like a brute one, or my dad would get an Old Spice one. Just a quick mindless present to give to your husband or your dad the cameo was uh very much in style in the 80s i bought my mom one for christmas one year um that was a it, it made a huge comeback um when i went to uh, pompeii a few years ago and i went to the factory where they actually invented and made the cameos and bought some for mary mm. It's by Pompeii. It's not in Pompeii, but it's close. This.
is that like an animal face? I think it is on this watch on the, these pocket watches for men my dad used to uh wear a pocket watch when he had the vested suit in the 80s he would uh wear the pocket watch sometimes it came with a pocket knife like that and then we're getting into the classy digital watches that were you know the gold bands and so forth cameo stuff for ladies and we get the hair curlers my mom had this kind of stuff the heated hair curlers um, hair dryers which I don't think have changed very much at all if you get right down to it the old uh, sea captain was a popular decoration and I also wanted to point out that men smoked pipes a lot in um, the late 70s and early 80s, including my dad and all of his friends. So um, when I was very young, my dad and his buddies would be uh, in like one room and they would be smoking pipes. And my mom and their wife and his friend's wives would be in another room. The pipes were a big thing and I don't know why. And then they kind of went off style and all the men put their pipes up. Um... Yeah, I don't know what was up with that. Luggage. Um, and we get to some men's fashions, like the timeless sweater vest. Velour, which was very big. Um, we get to some very stiff, you know, the one, the way you would wear a shirt like that. If you're a guy, is you'd have to wear the shirt garters. You'd have to, to achieve that look. You would have to connect to the bottom of your shirt tail to your socks with garters. Uh, see the uh, checkered golfing kind of pants. The sportswear was, it looks ridiculous today, but this was popular then for like the sophisticated sportsman look. The Robert Redford clone here with the vested suit and the pocket watch. But my dad would dress in something like this to work. He rarely would wear that type. He rarely did the open collar thing. He always, he his look was the vest and the suit. The flannel family here. Uh, that the um the emblems there was uh, the lacrosse. With the alligator, and then J.C. Penney had a fox that. So from a distance, you know, you could. For it almost looked the same. That's what their point was. You know, it looks like the damn alligator. Might as well just get save four bucks. Because four bucks in nineteen eighty is you know, roughly four hundred and sixty thousand dollars today. So, um, let's see some cardigans. It's Jimmy Carter encourages us to wear. Uh, this kind of um, blazer with a vest. Some of these outfits are truly kind of funny uh, looking now. They didn't age very well. And uh, a lot, the idea of matching with your spouse, uh, you did see that occasionally, you did. One day my parents bought us all matching shirts and I was so embarrassed that day when we were walking around. Um, track suits. The, uh, you know, the, uh, here we get to the, the manly western wear. Corduroy and flannel vests, you know, Western vests. This guy looks like he's, if you put a hat on, he could be like Matt Dillon in Dodge City, City here. Um, this. You see, a lot of this stuff didn't age very well. It really didn't. It's like they were just trying with too many patterns on some of these things. Shoe shiners. Um, yeah. The uh, winter coats with big old furry collars, puffy gloves. 
with these suede coats with the, like these suede vests. Oh boy. This is underwear for skiing and hanging out in the lodge after you get done skiing. Long johns. And then we get to some Western hats. Um, we were still at the tail end of the whole rural uh, phase in America where trucking, CBs, and Western wear was all the rage. And uh, country and Western bars were very popular. Uh, some rudimentary camouflage here didn't it it wasn't the military pattern because i think that was believe it or not still owned by the military they didn't let people wear that for a couple more years these um hiking boots with the red laces i remember um i had a pair of these when i was a kid robes for men some with hoods As you can see, there's a lot of cozy going on. Um, that speaks for itself. Um, okay. Let's see. And we get into some kid stuff. Bert and Ernie, Big Bird, um, Snoopy, Sesame Street. And these were, this is very typical of what was popular. Uh, Superman had just come out. That looked very much like the Christopher Reeve Superman outfit. More bonnets. Still hadn't come quite past that bicentennial. Then we got sports wear. And here's some uh, branded things. The Lone Ranger. Star Wars with Boba Fett. As he was uh, going to be in The Empire Strikes Back. And um, notice how like they had the, the colors wrong on a lot of the characters. Popeye, uh, Snoopy, Snooperman, Batman, Spider-Man, and the Hulk. What you're not seeing is Thor and Iron Man because those characters weren't that popular back then. They didn't come become popular until the new Marvel. All of that little kids wear, which is some of this is really cute. I mean, come on, they look like. That's just insane. Okay. Um, some of these, I would have been so embarrassed. But Popeye was a big deal because Robin Williams' movie had just come out. Um, and this is girls' wear. Um, that kind of belt with the elastic, uh, I, that was very popular. My family was constantly buying them for me. Hot Dogs was a brand of kids' clothing, along with Billy the Kid, and I think that was at Sears. And I remember I, uh, little le disco suits for kids, which is funny. Backpacks, which were very new and had not been refined yet for schools. Mork suspenders for the Mork and Mini fans. Pigs in Space, which was a Muppets thing. And you could see, have your favorite character on the back of your jeans, like Ziggy, Popeye, Tweety, Bugs, and the Roadrunner.
this was a popular color. That color of pants was the most com that color that color combo I saw all the time. Girls seemed to love that combo. Those wine colored pants and that pink shirt that was so common. Um, a lot of this is bringing back memories for me. Um, seeing some of this stuff. And then you get your sports stuff, sports branded merchandise. Quite a lot of sports branded stuff in 1980. Um, the Foot Locker for boys to put their clothes in in front of their bed. The Christmas ornaments here on the right side. Then we get to Christmas trees. Does that make you think of Goodfellas and the scene when he brings home the most expensive Christmas tree they had? Wrapping paper and stuff. The baby's first Christmas, 1980. I think this is Holly Hobby or something like that. Very popular for girls in the early 80s. The Crayon Coin Banks. Those were really popular. A lot of kids had those. <laughs> this is all the Hickory Farms kind of stuff. Um, a can of ham and crackers and cheeses and stuff. I always kind of wanted them, but, you know, I've actually bought them for myself sometimes to see how good they were. They never live up to what you think they're going to be. When you pull all of the components out and, you you know, after the, the, the tinsel and stuff, it's not very much stuff. And all the stuff is very thin. And Giant Hershey's Kiss. your own gumball machine and it's also a coin bank sewing machines microwave ovens cooking stuff and coffee makers and so forth ice cream machine a famous prop used in star wars empire strikes back that's now made its way to the mandalorian is a it's funny it's just an ice cream machine all this copper stuff um mostly used for decoration rarely anyone ever uses this stuff walks uh I remember this cookie jar. It's a very popular one. Bread boxes. Did anyone ever really use those? Um, yeah, we had that. That was our silverware pattern. With that rose on it. Let me see if we had any of this other stuff. We didn't have any of these plates. Sleeping bags. This 
Snoopy, Holly Hobby, Empire Strikes Back. Oh boy, a whole bedroom of Empire Strikes Back, even the wall art. Um, that would have been amazing for a kid. Now, my parents bought me the, um, <laughs> it was the rip-off version uh, of sheets. that It had, like, generic-looking uh, spaceships and stuff on it, and it had things that looked like R2-D2 and kind of looked like, but it just came close enough not to get sued. It's kind of funny, but they did try, and I appreciated it. And for, as, as far as I was concerned, it was good enough. Um, this is all your dart boards and chalk stuff for your men your man cave well, they didn't call it that back then but your din um some of the stuff is looking familiar Disco, lava lamps, all that stuff. Yep, that stuff was all very popular then. Uh, these Tiffany style lights were very popular. The late seventies, early eighties, that whole style. Wendy's started around this time. I may have been the late sixties, but they adopted this for years and years and years, the Tiffany thing. Um to try to have an old fashioned feel. They were going for some kind of nineteen twenties or thirties thing. And the, all the employees at Wendy's would wear like a, a newsboy hat. chainsaws this is your outdoorsy stuff i will say this catalog seems to be much more organized than the uh, sears one we looked at last week you got a lot of hardware shop vacs toolboxes tool sets all of this stuff is probably made really really well too probably still gracing garages um rain boots bowling shoes uh, rural-looking mailboxes. A lot of sporting stuff. We get the sleeping bags with Cracker Jack, Lifesavers, Doritos, Hawaiian Punch, Oreo, Crayons, Super Friends, Sesame Street. Uh, this is uh, the black powder thing. Was You could buy a lot of black powder stuff in uh, department stores back then, well, especially the kits where you'd make them. And then... Uh, 22 um swiss army knives this jeremiah johnson kind of like raffle cases for your black powder and okay I'm looking for the Red Rider. Daisy Powell. Where's the Red Rider at? Weight gems. That's a very small treadmill. 
computers. Early computers. With printers and everything. Boy. We've come a long way. Cameras. And we didn't have cell phones. Polaroid was your instant camera. I know they've been trying to make a comeback. I don't know if anyone's really buying them. Movie cameras. Um, fairly inexpensive at this, you know, at the projectors. And, I mean, you. these were almost priced to own back then. I mean, that might have been three months of salary. I mean, your take home, your weekly take home pay might have been forty to eighty dollars. It's your order forms and stuff. Now, if you were a kid, you wouldn't have even looked at any of that stuff, and you would have cut straight to this section. Now you've got um, ivory soap branded dolls and stuff. Kleenex and ivory so they they were. You know, promoting some of these dolls. These dolls are awfully pale. Kind of creepy. Um, this is a little workout girl. And then we get to Barbie. Different kind of Barbie than what we saw. But look at this. Like, see? See this? Now... In 1986, they repurposed it. So... I saw this last week. Oh. Oh, yeah. Look. It's basically the same thing. They repurposed that vehicle, and they made it into, like, the, the Rockers touring van. But it's the same doggone mode. See? They repacks and repaints. Ken had 70s hair back then. And we have early strawberry shortcake. Um, Star girls dolls. Uh, like fashion models. Um, Candy Darcy Perfect Pose Studio. So... And you get like a little dollhouse and furniture. That I remember this Ronald McDonald like, and the point of this toy was it had all kinds of like you know at laces to tie, zippers to zip, buttons to button. It was supposed to teach tactile function for kids. These doggone ventriloquist dummies you couldn't get away from them in the eighties. They were always trying to sell you Edgar Bergen and everything, um, and Howdy Doody. Sewing machines. Kitchen stuff. My goodness. I mean, it, the, the little girl would have a bigger kitchen than the mom here. They got all this stuff. There's that Pepsi thing, too. Like, you're the drive-in. That's what it, it looked like a miniature version. That's what, like, a Pepsi fountain looked like. Um, they had, it, it, it looked totally different back then. So actually that was accurate. And the Snoopy snow cone machine, which every kid wanted. Every kid wanted that. Okay, Curious George, Pink Panther, Animal, and Miss Piggy. You get these early childhood toys, that dog on phone. Um... Music playing toys. And 
And we get to farm play sets and stuff. I always wanted this farm play set when I was a kid. Because we lived in Kansas. And I saw a lot of those silos and stuff. And I wanted one to play with. Little Disney theater. Fisher Price. And we get to some early Lego. So you can see what Lego looked like back then. Matchbox. Trucks. I love trucks. Convoy had come out, so uh, big rigs were really popular at this point for boys. And I had a, a lot of big rigs that I like to line up in a convoy. A little cowboy western action figures. Um, racing. I remember that space futuristic car there. Smoking the Bandit inspired stuff. Universal Monsters. Uh, I've always, off and on, been very popular. And now we get to exciting stuff. Star Wars action figures. Star Destroyer. Um, the Millennium Falcon. You see all the Stormtroopers and everything. Um, Dewbacks, Hoth, Tauntauns, the Droid Factory, the um, Imperial Troop Transport, the Sand Crawler, the Land Speeder with Luke and Ben, uh, Snow Speeder, Cloud Car, action figures from the Empire Strikes Back. In the Star Wars action figure case. And you got your X-Wing and TIE Fighter. They didn't have the Han Solo Bespin out yet. So they still had the old Han Solo. In this collection here. They came out with the Bespin Han Solo later. And then you get Star Trek, the motion picture action figures, trying to compete the same scale. You get a bridge set. Um, you can pose all your figures in. You can get the crew, McCoy, Decker, Kirk, Scotty, Spock, Ilea, and then you can get some, some aliens, including a Klingon. Um, like, and different toys that went along with Star Trek. Then you've got Buck Rogers with Tweaky. Um, Buck Rogers. Oh, that's Flash Gordon figures from Flash Gordon. Um, let's see how they were all in the same scale. They're all trying to pull off a, a Star Wars here. You had uh, vehicles for Buck Rogers, the action figures here. And you even had, like, not a bridge, but a command center for Buck Rogers. Um, over here you had, um, the Mego superheroes. And notice that DC Marvel didn't matter. There wasn't any distinction. You got Batman right next to Captain America and the Hulk. And so you had play sets for them as well. Chips action figures, Ponch and John. You had Hulk muscles. I remember those. I uh, had some of these action figures, the, um, that type. They were a little bit cheaper. Then you get to the uh, Lone Ranger, Legend of the Lone Ranger movie. I think, or it hadn't come out yet, or maybe it had. You know, this is Legends of the West. And these were like, it, they had um, Wild Bill Hickok and Jesse James and all that stuff. You had like this. Not sure. Let's see. And you get to computer games. By Tommy and stuff.
handheld games, Simon games, uh, Hungry Hungry Hippo type of things, Hungry Hungry Pelicans, whatever that is, um, Light Bright sets, Crayon, Crayola Art things, little dentist sets. They had pretty creative toys back then, I have to admit. Sports games, RC, remote control, Smoking the Bandit. Um, train sets. Wow, some crazy die cast car sets. Some crazy toys here. Yeah. Then we got some science for your nerdy kids. Rock tumblers. We had one of those. I had, you know, the microscope and chemicals. The board, old board games, they don't even get color pages. And then you get to some more dollhouse stuff. Baseball collecting, baseball card collecting, stamp collecting, coin collecting. Cross stitching and so forth. More dollhouse stuff. Typewriters, which we used. But these are for kids, so to learn. Uh, this is the Texas Instrument stuff. Um, there's a show on Netflix called Candy about a murder that happened in in 1980, and um, they these figure prominently in them because the show takes place around the Texas Instruments plant. But those were very common back then. Playmobil. Playmobil people. Hot dog phone and space stuff, space target shooting. Chips. <laughs> Quite a lot of toys. And we get to pull and snooker, pinball. Look at these costumes. You have a chips costume, a soldier, like a space person, a cowboy, princesses, goddesses, cheerleaders, and we get to Lego, Lego sets. Not quite as sophisticated as they are today. More sports stuff. Whole set of action figures uh, look great. Noise making toys. No, the book and records, Black Hole and Star Wars, I had them both. Um, you would, um, well, at least the ones I had were just one small record. And you would listen and turn the page when you would hear R2-D2 beep. They made several of these. They were a lot of fun if you were a kid. Sesame Street Fever, like Saturday Night Fever. Sleds. Um, um, 
Let's see. These are books for kids. And these right here, um, these were the uh, classics for kids. And I uh, love these. They were classic books that were kind of written for kid level reading, you know, like third or fourth grade level reading. And I used to love to read them, maybe more like second grade level reading, but um, they had pictures and everything. And so I really enjoyed them. And they had like all the classics, you know, like Scarlet Letter and stuff. You know, they had books that touched on some Huckleberry Thin. They had themes that were, you know, they managed to maneuver around it, though, and make it friendly for kids to read. Roller skates were a big deal. Roller derby, disco, ro roller disco. Clocks, sporting stuff. Watches. Look at that. S Superman, Spider-Man, the Hulk, Popeye. Um, Annie, Holly Hobby, all the different Cinderella and the Prince. You can get your name on your watch, Brian, Susan, and you get to the cool stuff. Star Wars watches with C-3PO and R2-D2, Star Trek watches with the Enterprise and the Black Hole. The three science fiction movies that were competing, but Star Wars was clear-cut winner. And you get a clock with C-3PO and R2-D2 on it. More of your DIN games like foosball and pool. Card tables, dartboards, metal detectors, and magic kits for kids. The hamburger, the famous hamburger. In this time period, um, they made this hamburger was a popular image. It was used for everything from perfume bottles to art wall art to telephone ideas there was like a hamburger you remember like the bacon fad a few years ago well there was a hamburger fad and, and the, the backgammon was big if you um yeah for some reason in the 80s backgammon was like a popular thing you don't see it too much now but it had really taken the country by storm for a hot second um chess and we get to video games early video games um this is in television which we had the in television we had that card game um and there the games backgammon math fun basketball armor battle we had that one we had basketball we had space battle we had baseball. Um, let's see. And then there was Atari. There was ColecoVision. There were a lot of different um, competing video game platforms back then. But we had a television. And I think that was considered the one with the best graphics for a lot of the time. Got your Kiss branded merchandise, your Kiss uh, record case, guitar for your kids, and uh, Mr. Microphone t shirt. Kiss was very, very popular. Kiss your face makeup kit. There was a bit of a moral panic about Kiss at that time. And I remember my teacher said that um, don't watch Kiss because in their concerts, uh, blood would come out of their mouths and stuff. It, it was nutty. <laughs> there was always a moral panic. Car stereos. More sound systems.
tape cassette recorders, tape recorders. And we get to the end. And there we go. Here was 1980. It's like last week we did 86. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, come back next Sunday for more. And have a happy holiday. Keep your head up. It's These are weird times we're living in. It's a little harder to be happy lately for lots of reasons. So just remember, it's not just you. We're all kind of in the same boat. Um, and if it makes you feel better, we're all trying to find the same thing you're looking for too, which is some kind of glimmer of, of happiness in this time. So, um, and just remember it gets better no matter what. So, um, until next Sunday, come on back and I'll see you again. Bye.